We're on board SeaWorld 1, one of the finest vessels in Australia. Of course, SeaWorld Australia has been working on turtle research and rescue for many, many years. Their work is some of the finest in the world, and I've been invited to participate in the Turtle Rodeo. This is going to be great. The Turtle Rodeo is a regular event in the waters of Moreton Bay on the subtropical Australian coast. It's a research project where we capture turtles alive to check the health and condition of three important species, the loggerhead, the green, and the occasional hawksbill. This barnacle-encrusted creature is a green turtle, the species you'll see most often in tropical and subtropical Australia. SeaWorld's marine sciences manager, Trevor Long, has invited Steve to join the rodeo with researcher Cole Limpus, one of the world's most respected turtle authorities. Conditions are absolutely perfect. Calm seas, clear water, and no wind ripples on the surface make it dead easy to spot the turtles. We're chasing these turtles in September. It's a reliable time of year for weather, and it's a season when we expect to find all three species in the same area. The trapping technique's pretty simple. Spot the turtle, get there as fast as possible, and jump in. When you're catching any wild animal, the most important thing is speed. The faster it all happens, the less stress on the animal. Ooh, what a good capture. Fast, no rough stuff, and we've got all the research details we're after. What a beautiful little animal. This is a little green. A few details, and we're on the hunt again. Scanning the shallow, clear water, we look for more turtles. When they glide through the water, it's like an effortless flight. And they've got to be quick, real quick, and super maneuverable to stay away from big predators like sharks. It's hard keeping up with them, but once we get alongside them, we try to get broadside, get them up in front of the boat into the first quarter, and get ready to spear straight out of the boat. Here we go, closer and closer. We're gaining on him. Spear, straight down. Grab hold of the carapace and hang on. I got him. I've got to be careful of two things. This is the loggerhead. So the flippers, although they're a little shorter than the green, they still could give you a good belt in the head. But it's the jaws. That's what you've got to watch out for loggerheads. Notice the way he's got hold of this rope. They've got a beak light structure which would just about take your fingers right off if they bit down hard. On three. Oh, sorry. A uh, male. Woo! All aboard. One of the bigger turtles of the day, and we're off and hunting again. Here's another one. It's a green, and it's a big green this time. A real big green. Look at him go! Here we go, here we go. It's always excellent working with experts. Yes! Got him! What a struggle. I'm having trouble getting up for air. It's really deep water and I can't get up. He's thrashing around. These blokes are good, real good. In a matter of seconds, they've got the boat right on top of me. Grab hold of the flippers. That's it. It's always a bonus working with an expert team like Cole Limpus and the boys. Straight into the boat. He's a big turtle, all right. Woo! There's always stress involved on any capture, but this team strives so hard to limit the stress. Shifting these large animals is always a little difficult, but everyone's very gentle considering these loggerheads bite down hard. Every time they survey these turtles, they've seen around 60% of them before. There are always some new arrivals that turn up in Morton Bay after what they call the mystery years. After hatching, turtles will disappear for several years when their lifestyle and movements are almost a complete mystery. One thing that is known is that marine turtles travel astonishing distances. 
For example, one turtle from Morton Bay has turned up in the Gulf of Mexico, more than 8,000 miles away. The most valuable results of this research will be understanding the breeding biology of these magnificent creatures, especially in parts of the world where people need them for food and where they're most likely to be wiped out. This is a hawk's bill, classic little turtle. Now they've got a really interesting head structure. These eat sponges, so this beak-like structure on the end there is designed to get into crevices and pull out sponges. Interesting story with the hawk's bill is their carapace is a beautiful colour. And people have been known to kill these for their, for their shell to use as artefacts, hair combs, and that's very, very destructive and awful. If you're ever travelling overseas, never buy turtle byproducts or any wildlife products. They're precious and they need our help. The two main species of turtle we're recording, the greens and the loggerheads, are found in overlapping territories on the Australian east coast. And it's terrific that they've evolved in such a way that there's very little competition for food. Green turtles are primarily herbivorous, grazing extensively on seaweed. And loggerheads are carnivores with a particular liking for crustaceans and crabs, although both will sometimes try the other species' food. This, believe it or not, is an immature green, and uh, he's looking at about five or ten years before he starts breeding. Now, these are pretty good-sized animals, but sea turtles weighing more than half a ton have been recorded in the past. If they survive their predators, these turtles will live as long as a human being. But exactly how long isn't certain. No research program's been going long enough to discover their maximum age. This is a green turtle, absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. Now, we can't tell whether it's a male or a female. It hasn't reached sexual maturity yet. This is a really interesting one. It's an amputee. More than likely, at a young age, it's had its flipper removed, perhaps by a fish, and it's grown up with only three flippers and survived. They are born survivors. Survival is exactly what this research program is about. They're checking the general health of these turtles, and among other things, they're looking at the effects of pollution. Turtle populations are under such stress, especially loggerheads, that they need to identify problems as soon as possible. Once we've finished measuring and weighing, we mark the turtles with a piece of blue ribbon. The ribbon breaks down in the water and will be completely gone in a couple of weeks, so it's no problem to the turtles. As we travel further up the coast, we move into an area called the Great Sandy Region. It's one of the world's biggest masses of sand and it's prime turtle country with wide ocean beaches, absolutely perfect breeding and nesting areas. We're on the magnificent east coast of Australia in the northernmost state of Queensland and it's turtle mating season. We've already started to see some dark shapes just behind the breakers, loggerheads and green turtles. Hey, there's one right there. You can see right behind the breakers. Now all you can see is a dark shape just flipping along and I can see another dark shape up here. So they're already starting to pair up. They're easy to spot when they come up for a breath. It looks like a bit of driftwood coming up. Down they go. Oh man, I've got to get into it. I just saw a couple coming up and getting a breath. This is great. The turtles are coming up. I can see them getting a breath. And I reckon that they're green. These rocky headlands are absolutely brilliant for green turtles. They provide plenty of cover and camouflage, but they also have mosses and grasses sticking to the rocks, so it's easy for them to get a feed. I'm out there. Look at the size of those flippers. It's one of the quickest ways to pick a green turtle. In areas with a lot of sand, the rocks are like magnets for hungry green turtles, because that's the place where they'll find their favorite food. See how she turns her shell towards me? 
That's a part of a defence strategy that's helped ensure the survival as a species for millions of years. As soon as they sense something they don't recognise, they immediately turn their heavily armoured carapace towards the possible threat. Like crocodiles, turtles are survivors from the age of dinosaurs. Their shape and way of life has hardly changed for 200 million years. That's a typical grazing spot for green turtles, rocks covered with mosses and seaweed. The diet of a fully grown green is almost completely herbivorous. When they start life as hatchlings, they eat just about anything that floats past them. But as adults, they become almost total vegetarians. This is a real turtle killer, fishing line caught in the weed. They'll unknowingly eat it or it will get entangled on them and it will slowly cause their death. Other human waste that kills turtles are plastic bags that some species swallow thinking they're jellyfish. Then I spot what we've come to see. A group of three on a sandy seabed. It's a pair of mating green turtles with another male sitting right next to them, waiting his turn. The males are just raging. They're waiting around, hoping they're gonna have a go. Their hormones just get out of control this time of year. It's just like a mating frenzy. I wouldn't want to be a female for all the tea in China. This is excellent. Now, normally, turtles are in deeper water when they're mating. They'll actually go right down to the bottom sometimes, and they'll mate for hours before they become uncoupled. Now, it's the responsibility of the female to bring both turtles to the surface in order to breathe. She's really got to work to get them both up. The male kind of forgets everything except mating. He's just interested in what he's doing, so it's, it's her job to get them to the surface. Now, here, where they're in shallow water, not only is it is exciting to see them, but also so she can get air easily, and they can escape predators such as sharks. When mating's finished, there's usually at least one more male waiting for the opportunity to mate. Sometimes there can be half a dozen or more male turtles competing for a single female. The females will often show a definite preference for a particular partner and will try to escape the other males. The males hang on during mating with a pair of claws on the front flippers. They lock onto the front edge of the female's carapace, and you'll often see deep notches cut into the female's shell. Hey, there's two males fighting near the surface. Fighting like this is common in areas where the males outnumber the females, and the wounds they inflict with their sharp beaks can be quite serious. As you would expect, the bigger turtle usually wins the contest and gets the right to mate. In the early part of the mating season, coupled turtles like these loggerheads can be seen floating together for hours at a time. Nothing interferes with their natural instinct to reproduce this species. The males are fertilizing hundreds of eggs which will be laid in nesting sites on the beaches later in the mating season. Turtles have an amazing homing instinct. Both males and females migrate to the same mating areas at the same time of the year. They are so preoccupied during mating that it's a time when they're particularly vulnerable to predators like sharks.